Well, today I am working on my wooden utensils and cutting boards and things like that. Twice a year, usually somewhere within the late winter and then uh, early fall, somewhere in there when things start cooling down, uh, I like to treat all of my wooden utensils and stuff uh, to keep them from cracking and stuff like that. And I actually noticed one, which is a fairly new one that I've only conditioned once. And it's already got a crack in it. I should have conditioned it more. A lot of times with newer ones, you have to condition them two or three times in a row to really get them uh, lubricated good and all that kind of good stuff. So that one there, I don't know. Hopefully I'll salvage it, but we'll, we'll work on it. And uh, I thought I'd share it with you what I do. Uh, I use a simple thing. What I use is I use walnut oil and a little beeswax and the reason I use this there's a lot of different things that people use and for my pen I used to use mineral oil that was my thing that I used all the time and the more I've read up with the, especially like with the EWG uh, website if you've ever went on there they let you know the toxicity levels in different things and mineral oils actually got more in it than I thought it did uh, a lot of people like to use olive oil and olive oil is good I've used that before too on quick things or whatever that I just wanted to hurry up and do something with. But it eventually will go rancid on you. And, you know, you don't want stuff soaked into your wood and go rancid. I don't know if you've smelt things that's been rancid, but they have an odor to them and stuff too. Uh, so I'm, I'm off of that. And uh, coconut oil, I've used that. And it's as less likely to rancid as olive oil is. Olive oil is actually a lot more easy to go rancid than coconut oil is. But from what I've found, uh, the walnut oil is one of the best to use. It penetrates better, for one thing. It actually penetrates into the wood really good. And it um, is edible in that, in that aspect, for that matter. And it just does better, I think. So, all I did with this, guys, here I am about measuring again. I want to tell you I used, let's see, this is six ounces. This thing, six ounces of walnut oil to, I'll say a quarter cup, maybe, maybe not quite a quarter cup of beeswax. And I just melted it in a, uh, I put them, what I do is, you can put them in this, actually, and stick it in a pan of water, just like you would make a double boiler, and stick this in the water. At, without it going inside of it naturally and put your beeswax in there and let it melt down and then pour your oil in there mix it up and it'll set up uh, this one here mine's never the same consistency because this one here is a little bit it could have used a little bit more beeswax I don't measure that stuff now as for applying it there's different opinions of this walnut oil is very good for your skin it's actually anti-aging and stuff too so you can use this stuff on your skin as well and it does really well. But when I apply it, I like to apply it with just my hands. Just because, no reason other than it's good for my hands anyway, so why not? So, you know what I didn't do? I meant to tell you what I did with my stuff first. I've already done this. But what I take to, I'll just put it right there, is I take like a cookie sheet, especially for these utensils, Take you some kind of, uh, I wouldn't use a really good one because oil will get on it somewhat, but an old dish towel or something. And then I like to lay paper towels on it just to kind of protect my dish towel to a degree. Anyway, I think I'll have to keep that one out because I'll probably need it. So that's what I like to lay this stuff on as I do it. And this one needs to set for a couple days to penetrate good. These handles on these probably really don't need it because they're the store bought that's been treated but I don't know they may too at the same time so I do it because that stuff will crack I know you've seen wood that's cracked so I rub these down real good and even my uh, little cleaver here I like to or beater or whatever tenderizer I'll spit it out in a minute I like to even rub it down uh, I won't do all of these. Well, right here, I don't know if you can see the crack that's in that. See that crack? Well, I didn't get enough on it when I done it. So I'm going to treat this baby. Now, as I said, I'm going to treat these and I'm going to let them set for a couple days. And after a couple days, 
something like this one here that needs a double treatment, I will retreat it and let it set for a couple more days. And uh, then I will put them up where they belong. Now this uh, beeswax in it, a lot of people don't even put beeswax in it. And you don't have to. I've done that before without using beeswax. But the beeswax helps it to adhere to it a little better, I think. So I like to use beeswax. Now see here, I've also got a wooden bowl and my cutting board. This cutting board here is fairly new, which I have treated it a couple times. It's looking pretty good, but it definitely needs treated again. This bowl, it soaks up oil like crazy. I can do this bowl. I don't know what kind of wood it's made out of or what, but two days, it looked like I really didn't do anything to it. But I love this bowl. This bowl actually came from my mother-in-law. It looked like somebody had, after she passed away, you know, when you go through people's things to get things sorted and all that. Um, it looked like she'd never used this bowl. I don't think she did. It was probably a gift from somebody, and she just never used it, it didn't look like. So I was excited to get this bowl. Can't wait to really get it treated good. I need to just soak it down, I think let it sit. I even thought about getting it really warm and then doing it that maybe that oil would really get down in the pores of this stuff good. I don't know. What's your opinion on that? Anybody got an opinion on that? Anyway, I love this bowl. I will actually set that bowl on top of my cutting board when I get done. This cutting board here, if you can tell, I've had it for a long time. And I like it being the size it is. I love my big one for a lot of different things, but I like having this little one because I use it every night when I make our salads and stuff. It's small. I throw it right back in that thing right there if I get done. But I really put that one through the ringer. I think you need a small one and a larger one. Or to me, you do anyway. I think it comes in a lot more handy. Now this little booger, I'm probably going to, well, I'll just lay it on top of that bowl. Sometimes I hang this up is what I was going to say. Or I prop it up like this somewhere. Let it sit for a few days. For now, I'm going to set it right there. But I will keep doing these. Um, some of the things that I'm going to share in the next week or two, or sometime between now and, and the time spring comes, I always make uh, pinto beans. Last year, a lot of people asked me if I would do a video doing my pinto beans, and I had already done them. I buy pinto beans in the bag at the grocery store, and I usually get about three five-pound bags, because I don't usually get this through the winter or through the year. And I cook them, can them, and uh, that way I have them for the whole year. And I like doing that now. I tend to always do that in February. And the reason I like doing it in February is because, for one thing, you have to have your house heated up because it's cold weather. So what more better time than to pull out the canner, the pressure canner at that, and heat up the house. So that's why I like to do that. And we, we love to have pinto beans. I always make mine in the pints because usually it's just me and my husband. Sometimes I make a few quarts just because when we have big family get-togethers and stuff like that, I like to use it. So, got that boogers done. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I encourage you to drag out your wooden vessels and give them a good lathering. Show them a little TLC. They'll be good to you for years to come. And like I said, I do this twice a year. I think maybe if you've done it at least once a year would be good, but I like doing it twice a year. So, there we go, guys. Bless you guys, and we will have Remember When next, and we'll see you later. God bless. Okay, guys, it's time for Remember When again. And today I want to share a few things that I actually have that are kind of old school things that um, I wanted to share with you guys. And I actually have one that I actually need identified. I've got an idea of what it was used for, but I ain't really sure. But, well, let me tell you that one first. 
it's just booger. My daughter and them had bought a home that uh, previously an elderly lady had lived there. I'm assuming her husband before that. But she had a bunch of, uh, you could tell they, were, they had uh, um, made applesauce stuff by different things that they had in one of the little outbuildings. And I kind of think this might have something to do with that. It, it's kind of sharp on the ends, though, like you could cut with it. I don't know if maybe cut apples with it or something different, but I can't really identify this. I haven't looked it up, though, but I figure I'd just ask you guys. So I thought you'd ask, but it is rusted, so I'm not sure if they would actually use that doing something like that or not. There's one thing I really need identified. I'd like to have identified. But a lot of this stuff is stuff that my grandfather, well, there, for example, let me start with this. And I've actually got my grandfather's knife, and I should have pulled it out, and I didn't. But my grandfather used to whittle all the time, my mother's dad. And one of the things that he whittled, actually not long before he passed away, was this little um, whale, wishing whale. And you could tell by the little bucket how he really took the time to whittle out the inside and everything. You probably can't tell it good. You tell he cut a knot off of it there. But I thought that was pretty cool, and I like to keep stuff like this. Oh, you know, my grandfather made it. And he also made this, and this is actually usable. And he did smoke a pipe. This one, it didn't look like he ever used it or anything like that. But it is actually usable because the, uh, it's not a bamboo, but some type of bamboo-looking stem. He was in Virginia, so whatever type of, but it's hollow all the way through. And you can tell the way he drilled it out and everything that you could actually use this corn cob pipe <laughs> and a button nose. So ain't that cool? I love that. I keep this, I've got a curio cabinet, I keep this stuff in, or this stuff anyway. And he's also, uh, they sang a lot. My grandfather and my grandmother and their siblings, they had six kids. Uh, they sang, especially the girls, all the girls sang with them. And he had a pitch pipe that he used all the time whenever they'd sing. They sang a cappella. And so that's what they would use. And it's old, you can see how worn it is. I don't know if you can tell on this or not. It's really worn, and you can tell there's one of these that don't really sound very good anymore. But they also buried him with one of these, and this was his old one, and I think what happened is the, probably the one that don't work good anymore. Started not working good anymore, and they got him another one, but they actually buried him with one of these. Okay, something else that when my mother passed away, she still had this in her cabinet, and it was cool. It's a uh, spirit turpentine. It's 79 cents wrote on the back of it. That's how old it is. And it's nearly half full. And I, I know it sounds weird, but I like the smell of turpentine. But I think it's just because it brings me back to memories years ago and stuff like that. We used to take this when we'd get a lot. I used to get a lot of fever blisters and stuff. And they said it was because your stomach was upset and you had a viral something going on in your stomach. But I remember taking a teaspoon of sugar and putting two or three drops of turpentine in that sugar and taking that, whoo, you would belch that stuff up for days, literally days. I'm, at least two or three days you belch that stuff up. It was horrible. But I do remember not getting blisters for a long time after that. But that's what we used to do. Crazy, huh? This was my father's, I mean, I'm sorry, my husband's grandfather's fillet knife. They fished a lot because they lived near the uh, east coast of North Carolina and they that was his fillet knife and I actually want to get it recovered you can see that the, it's broke there it's broke here and I'd like to get that re, restocked because you can tell that's an awesome fillet knife it's super thin he's got it really good and worn out to where you could really get into things and fillet so I love that and I can't find knives like this anymore that that's that super precise looking I can't describe what I'm trying to say I hope you can see it though I love this little knife. That stays in my curio cabinet, too. Now, this stuff doesn't stay in my curio cabinet, but it stays in my pantry. And this is really cool stuff, too. And uh, I can't remember where I got this, to be honest with you. But this is an old cookie. Spritz, spritz cookies. Remember those spritz cookies? Which I make new things with these. But I have tried these things, and these are a booger, too. I'm, I've tried the modern ones. 
and I, to me they're a very hard, unless you got the right type of dough. But they've got all kinds of different discs to go with them. But I've got all kinds of cookie cutters nowadays, so I don't even mess with these type of spritzers anymore. And it's also got this that goes on it that you can put on it that has these little tips. See the little tips? They're aluminum. They're more like aluminum than they are anything. You stick them in there and then stick them on that end of that. In fact, it's very old. Very old. You can tell it's super old. And now I've got another one that I've actually used this one. Uh, but I've got a pampered chef one now. But um, this is a little cake decorating kit. Old school. And it's got the little, it's aluminum too. You can tell it's aluminum. And it's got the different tips. I've got four different tips that came with this. But there's your little, I don't know if you can see it or not. And then that's one too. It's the same type of thing. It's probably a little small. And then just a little whole one. So those are just really cool old school things that I happen to have. And I think are very cool to keep and to show my grandkids and stuff about. And I even let little Miss Jasmine use this little booger. She loves it. So, that's going to be my old school remember when stuff today. Um, you know, hopefully this will bring up some good memories for you guys. You know, whittling was a big thing back in the day. And turpentine was a big thing back in the day. And these little spritzer cookies was a big thing. Just about every older cookbook you find has got some type of spritz cookie in it. I appreciate you. It's a great deal. I hope you have a marvelous week this week, and I will be seeing you in a few days. God bless.